I'm in Scotland and I'm on two missions. One is to play St. Andrew's Old Course or I'm not allowed to leave Scotland. The other is to achieve a scratch handicap in Scotland in 20 rounds without touching a driving range. So far, what I know is that the old course was crafted by Tom Morris. So I'm in Cruden Bay, an old Tom Morris design course. I want to learn the ways of the old Tom Morris, and I'm going to test my strategy against this golf course. I tested my strategy to achieve a scratch handicap at Trump Turnbury, two courses at Glen Eagles, and at Trump Aberdeen. So far, I've got the handicap down to 2.4. It's a complicated calculation, but that's the point of the series. My general strategy oh, to achieve a scratch that? handicap in Scotland okay. is to hit a tee shot with a one or two or three iron off the tee. Only it's going to leave me longer approaches in, but I'm going to hit those longer approaches just around the green in puttable locations. If not puttable, I want to miss in the best place for an easy chip. The avoidance part of the strategy is avoiding three putts, avoiding all bunkers, whether that's fairway or greenside. They are absolute killers on the Lynx golf course. I also have to avoid hitting shots I don't know how to hit. I have to stay in my wheelhouse and stay comfortable. This will depend on hitting fairways as we saw at Turnbury and Glen Eagles. When you don't hit fairways, you're in big trouble. An update to my strategy though, is that I bought a used hybrid from eBay. It's a 19 degree SLDR and it's my first round with it. I got it because I thought I'm going to have low temperatures for the whole trip and I actually became fearful of hitting my long irons in the cold off the tee. Every other part of my strategy remains the same, which is okay. trying the hybrid. Please, we've got 88 yards here. Can you say I'm lucky? I'm not sure if I'm lucky or unlucky, but I'm going to give it a best shot. 88 with 48 degree. A big hurdle I have to overcome to achieve scratch golf in Scotland is I have to learn to play with people I don't know who know the channel. It's a unique kind of pressure, but I hope I can get a few rounds in with the same people so that I can feel a level of comfort and maximum friendship. Come on, Wynn. On this very sensual par three, I discovered a shot. It felt like a chip, a chip where I tried to bring through the right side of my body. Somehow I made a nice contact and the ball stays low. It looks like this ball speed is very low, but it still travels the distance I need. It feels effortless compared to the very effortful shots I usually manufacture into a wind. I'll try it again later in the round, but on this hole into the breeze, I've hit my four iron pin high with just a chip shot. I absolutely love it. Now, how do we get a tea time at the old course? My playing partner, Dale, gives us a rundown. So if you're going to queue, it's a bit of a gamble because only every day it's a, it differs how many places we've got available. So when I played it, I had a space in the ballot and the guy I was playing with went to queue there at two o'clock in the morning. He waited all the way till seven o'clock till it opened and he was one space away from actually getting the game. So it's a bit of a gamble, it's a bit of a risk. So he didn't get a game. He actually, played the new course with his old man, played that in the morning, and his dad played the old course 30 years ago with his dad, so it was going to be like a special day. And then he got a call with 15 minutes to go before my tea time, the person I was meant to be playing with, they dropped out, he got the space, and his dad walked the course for him. So I think I'm going to go short right of the hole here. We've got 232 to the center, and 203 to the front. So if I hit a 200 yard shot, front right I can putt for the eagle I'm not gonna do anything lower lofted than a four and I'm gonna try to hit that shot I hit on the par three now I actually thought this hole was a damn par five it is so long into the wind that there's no other option but to play it as a par five just don't go in the bunker just run back This video is brought to you by Swing Tweaks. Are you trying to lower your score just like I am, but you're tired of these bad shots, the tops, 
the balloons into the wind, the sky balls, the slices, the hooks. You need to download Swing Tweaks. Now, Swing Tweaks is an app where you can take a video of your down the line swing, your front on swing, all in the app with the beautiful template that they've set up. You tell them all about your game in the feedback section. You tell them what's good, what works, what doesn't work. A PGA professional in the app will assess your swings. He will assess what you've written and he's going to tailor make advice for you based on your swing, based on what he sees. The PGA Pro is going to give you drills. He's going to give you advice. He's going to give you things to work on. And each tweak is only the cost of a sleeve of golf balls. It's not going to break the bank. Even better, if you use my code PLAYERS, you get 20% off your first tweak. Difficult shots lead to more difficult shots. That's the nature of golf. If you want to play scratch golf, you play easy shot after easy shot after easy shot. What do I mean? I mean, you put yourself in positions where the decision is easy, the shot is something you know, you're not putting yourself into positions where you have to guess and hit shots you don't know all the time, leading to more shots that you don't know. Go. Oh, dead. Not very clever, but this is where I learned that I need to drop the ego in Lynx Golf. This has to be the adaptation to my strategy. I need to drop all ego and start hitting shots that I just know are going to get me to the hole, not in the shit. When you go in these bunkers, you have no guarantee of a good lie. Nine out of ten times, you're going to get a very shitty lie. Ball's on a downhill, the ball's next to the lip, you're standing out the bunker, you're up against the wall, something bad is going to happen. That may be the best shot of my life. And by just taking my ego club, my pitching wedge, into the breeze, I don't give myself a great chance. All I needed to do was just hit an 8 or a 9 iron, ascertain the green, and I walk off there with maybe a par, guaranteed bogey. And a bogey into a long par 4 into the breeze can be negated by another par 4 down breeze where you can get close and try and make a birdie. It's all about attacking when we can and defending the hell out of our score into the wind at a Lynx course. Mm. Okay, players, we've got a puttable situation here, in my opinion. It's a uh, chippable, but it's not that spongy. But I don't want to bump, you know, because if I bump it, I have to rely on the grass. I like the fact that I can just bash this and it's going to run kind of like a green. I think I'm going to go way right. I think there's a backstop behind the pin so I can be aggressive. I've just got to give it enough to get up the slope. That's weak. <laughs> so weak. I thought yours was. After all T Club options have been exhausted, I crack out the one iron. This is my fifth different tee shot of the day inside only nine holes. Into the wind, I decide to hood the face and swing for a big sweeping hooker. There's so much space to the right that if it doesn't sweep, I'll be in play. But sweep, it did. And I nearly went cascading down the cliff into Never Never Land. On approach, we're downhill into the breeze. Remember that shot, Matty Boom Boom. Downhill will reduce the playing distance, but the wind is into our face. It's gonna negate that. It's playing the exact distance. I try my new shot, I discovered on the par three. It's absolutely money. But you know what's more money? The bird dog putter from waterplayergolf.com. I'm using the chrome version, also available in black and oil. I thought I might do that. That's the castle that inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. There's a huge elevation change down to the fairway and there's so much space that I can trust anything. I choose my trusty Tacomo 4 iron. Okay, I'm working it out now. Okay players, we've got ourselves a beautiful approach, a nice t-shirt I'm working. I'm working out that little punch shot, keep it low. I think I'm just going to try it here too, if it's not in a, a decent wedge range. So what I'm getting here is 120 into the wind. 
So I figure why not just hit a punchy nine. Let's see if we can do that. Let's not go with the pitching wedge because I might come up short. So let's do what we did on the previous pitching wedge that landed in that bunker. And let's do a nine that just stays low. Okay, I'm gonna to have to hit something more like an eight iron. Oh no, it's on. So that's the shot I'm gonna be hitting now, those little punch shots like that. Take the ego out of it. I'm trying to hit driver and one iron and everything. Just hit the three iron up there like my plan is always to do that, but I'm not doing it and it's, it's detrimental to my game. So we're just going to hit these little punch shots now. Mm, dead straight. I'm using every round as a learning experience for the old course. That is my long-term goal, to hit that old course and to get that scratch handicap. Every shot is a learning experience. We can take to the next round, the next shot, the next hole. Local knowledge of a golf course will also slash strokes of my score. I'm not sure if I'll play a course twice on this trip, but if I do, I will be scratch 100%. Just being able to play a course twice allows you to understand the angles where not to go where not to miss where to miss where you should hit the ball that is the key to the scratch golf of course to be a scratch golfer you cannot short side yourself leaving easy chips and easy up and down opportunities will be the key to slashing the two to three to four strokes per round i need to get from a two or three handicap down to scratch Here's what happens when I break my rule. I don't stay out of the bunker. Well, it doesn't look like we have much luck with these bunkers yet, players. I've got another one where I can't stand in the bunk. Let's see how we do, though. We may be able to get that one out a little bit less, a bit closer to me. We've only got 100 yards. Yeah, this is going to be tough. But I think I can hit a chip, chip shot. Just a little chip. This happens often on Lynx courses. Look at my stance outside the damn bunker. How do you hit a ball that is a foot below your feet in the bunker. I actually hit a very nice shot, but it's way over the back. Too much power, too much steroids. And here's one you won't see every day. I only break this one out for very special occasions. The camera zoomed out so we can capture all of the glory. But my back is turned to the target 100%. I close the club face and aim that club face to the pin. It's almost 90 degrees perpendicular to me. I swing on my feet line with a 90 degree closed face and glance the ball off the closed face. It shaves my leg and rolls just to the right of the pin. They don't call me Steven Ballesteros for nothing. What is that? <laughs> I did not see that. Good shot. The impact of the wind and turf conditions around the green, as well as learning how to use them in your favor, cannot be underestimated on Lynx course. Rolling the ball up, using the slopes, using the downhill, using the wind to help you stop or get the ball rolling further, this is key to scratch golf. On this 400 yard hole, I hit a six iron into a fairway that is banked toward me. No rollout, and it still only leaves me 180 yards into the green, because this hole is straight downwind. 180 yards would normally be a 6 or 7 iron in very hot Thailand or carry straight onto the Bermuda greens where the ball will stop beautifully. But with the temperature dropping in Scotland as the sun abandons us, the wind is so strong of the ocean, you can't see it because we're sheltered. But as the ball goes above the ground, above the dunes, the 9 iron is sufficient to get me onto the green. The wind will make it carry another 10 or 20 yards and there's a downhill bowl shape that rolls the ball up to the green.
To be able to use the ground, the slopes and the wind to your advantage will be the key to my scratch handicap. If I can learn and retain this information, we're going to scratch inside 20 rounds, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, take it to the bank, just like when your page would make an OnlyFans. I really like it. I really like it. I don't know where it is though. But what a day, what a course guys. You have to hit it firm into the breeze. The green is a bit longer, hit it a bit firmer. Even that's not, not long enough, but tap in distance. As Audio Slave says, in the last remaining light, we play our final two holes. I'm a bit tired and a little bit shocked that it's 8.30 in the evening. I have never played golf this late in my life and the sun's still up. I learned a lot in this round to use in the next rounds. Will I become a scratch golfer with this strategy? I believe I will. But the thing I have to really focus on is just cutting out the silly shots. This is the hardest part to achieve a scratch handicap or any single figure handicap to reduce the errors. I'm not going to be hitting big bombs. I'm not going to be playing champagne golf. I'm playing lemonade ability hacker golf to a scratch handicap to show you how the handicap system works and how you can do it too. You do not need to be perfect. You just need to be perfectly you. And if you're perfectly you, you can use the shots that you have to achieve anything you need to in golf. You don't need to feel pressure to hit long drives, to hit spinny wedges, to be a professional. You use your strengths.